Hey everyone! In my last video, we made a scaled 2D floor plan in Tinkercad. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn that 2D plan into a 3D model in just a few simple steps. We'll be using the scale of 1mm equals 1 inch. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial, I recommend watching it for a refresher on scaling. Welcome back to HBN Infotech Tutorials. To get started, head over to my website, link in the description, and find the Tinkercad link. There, you can download the 2D floor plan we created. You'll need a free Tinkercad account to download it. Just sign up and click Copy and Tinker. Alright, I hope you've got your copy of the 2D plan open. Let's get started on making it 3D. The first thing you want to do is make sure you are in isometric view. You can switch to isometric view by clicking the home icon. The second thing you want to do is delete all annotations and dimensions. Next, we need to remove the door symbols and use boxes or rectangles instead. For this, we can just copy the rectangles we used for the window symbols. Keep in mind that the main door is 3 feet 6 inches wide, translating to 42 inches and thus 42 millimeters in our scaled model. Also, the other doors are 3 feet wide, which is 36 inches or 36 millimeters in our model. Additionally, zoom in as far as you can. This will ensure you can snap to the grid accurately. Note that the current grid snap was set to 1mm during our previous tutorial. We will continue with that setting for now and change it if required. Throughout this process, you may need to copy, rotate, move, and align the rectangles as necessary. Now, at this stage, I'd like to reduce the grid snap setting to 0.1 millimeters for more accuracy. To ensure proper alignment, you'll need to rotate the entire 3D view often and zoom in closely. Furthermore, consider changing the color of the door symbols to a distinct color. This can be helpful. Also, consider placing the door symbols centered on the wall and ensure the door symbols are slightly thicker than the wall. This is because we'll be using these door symbols to cut through the walls and create the door openings. In our case, the inner wall is thinner than the door symbols we are using, so there's no problem there. However, you will need to change the thickness of the main door slightly. Currently, it's 9 mm, so let's make it 12 mm. Similarly, increase the thickness of the window symbols and center them as well. Since the outer wall thickness is 9 mm, we'll make the window symbols 12 mm. And at this point, I'd like to remind you that 1 mm here relates to 1 inch in real world size, based on our scale. Next, we'll set the height of the doors. We'll increase the height of the rectangles. Typically, a standard door height is 7 feet, which is 84 inches. Therefore, we'll set the height to 84 millimeters. Next, we'll adjust the window heights. Typically, standard windows are 3 feet tall, which is 36 inches. Therefore, we'll set their height to 36 millimeters. Remember that the bathroom windows are 2 feet or 24 inches high, so they need to be 24 millimeters. 
At this point, it's important to note that the ruler tool must be positioned near the grid to allow for measurement inputs, which are necessary for setting precise dimensions. We had already placed the ruler tool in our previous tutorial for this project. Now, we'll adjust the window sill heights. Typically, standard window sills are 3 feet, which is 36 inches. Therefore, we'll set them to 36 millimeters. Remember that bathroom window sills are 5 feet or 60 inches high, so they need to be 60 millimeters. Let's move the windows up the Z-axis to these heights. Now, we'll duplicate the entire floor plan, including all objects, to create two different 3D versions. For the first version, we'll set the walls to their full height, and for the second, we'll use a minimal wall height to see the interior. To do this, select all objects and group them. Be sure to select Multicolor when grouping to keep the original colors. After grouping, click Duplicate and move the copy a short distance away. To edit each group, you'll need to ungroup them. Next, we'll create the walls and the openings for the doors and windows in both floor plans. First, we need to turn all the door and window boxes into holes, then group them. Now, we'll extrude the walls. For the first floor plan, we'll set the height to 9 feet, which is 108 inches or 108 millimeters in our model. This is a common wall height. For the second floor plan, I shall set the wall height at 3 feet 6 inches, equivalent to 42 inches, resulting in a scaled measurement of 42 millimeters. Next, group the wall and the whole shapes together to create the door and window openings. If you notice box creases around the door openings, it means we need to fix something. So, undo the last group or ungroup the wall and whole shapes. Then, deselect everything and select only the wall and ungroup it. The wall is actually multiple pieces that we grouped earlier. You may also need to ungroup the whole shapes. To prevent creases, we need to group each wall section individually with its corresponding hole shapes. If you still see a crease, it's likely the box hole shape isn't perfectly aligned with the adjacent wall. To resolve this, move the box hole shape slightly. Remember to hold down the shift key while moving to restrict the movement to a single axis. After creating the door and window openings, group all the wall segments together. This will make the walls appear as a single, continuous unit. I found that grouping all objects simultaneously can sometimes lead to grouping errors, resulting in creases on the connected objects. Therefore, 
I recommend grouping two objects at a time. This issue seems to occur when there are too many objects and whole objects being grouped together. It's possible this is a bug. Grouping smaller sets of objects can be a workaround. If the grouping fails, simply undo and retry. We've now completed creating the wall openings in the first floor plan. Let's repeat the process for the second floor plan. I'm going to fast forward through these steps. Feel free to change the wall color for the second floor plan if you like. Next, we'll add the doors and windows. While you could model them from scratch, it would take a lot of time. Instead, let's use the pre-made symbols. So, navigate to the Shapes Library, select Structures and Scenery, and locate the available door and window symbols. Drag the desired doors and windows into the scene. Please be advised that size adjustments may be necessary to align with project specifications. I'm going to fast forward through these steps. If you don't find the 3D models you're looking for in the Shapes Library, you can search for them online. For instance, searching Tinkercad Toilet will show you many results from the Tinkercad website. To find any specific model, just type Tinkercad before your search term. You'll likely find several options. After finding the model you want, click the appropriate link and then copy in Tinker. Remember to give credit to the creator by leaving a reaction. It's important to respect their effort. After selecting Copy and Tinker, the model will appear in your dashboard and open for editing. Often, these 3D models are composed of separate parts, so you'll need to select all parts and group them together. Make sure to choose the Multicolor option to keep the original colors. Once grouped, copy the model into your project file and then adjust its size and position as needed.
Following the same process, I've added a wash basin, bathtub, wardrobe, and kitchen unit to the project. I want to express my sincere gratitude to the creators for their excellent contributions. I encourage you to show your appreciation as well. Fantastic! We've successfully transformed a 2D floor plan into a 3D model using Tinkercad, just like we said we would in the previous tutorial. I hope this scaled version is useful for your 3D printing projects. Please subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Share your Tinkercad requests in the comments below. As always, I'll be back with more great content in my next video. Until then, goodbye from hbninfotech.com.